Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope you all are doing well. It is good to see your faces or your pictures. So good. <laughs> um, it's good, it's good, it's good. Um, let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful and so thankful for another day. We're thankful for your strength. God, I feel your strength. Thank you for keeping our minds. Thank you for keeping our hearts. Thank you for keeping our heads lifted, Lord God. Even when we seem like we're at the end of our rope, Lord, we can hold on to you. We just thank you for that. We ask that you would wash us tonight, purify us, Lord. Lord, open our minds and our hearts. Help us to see you, Lord. Lord, it is through you that you are the one that gives us victory. You are the one that helps us to stand in the midst of all adversity. You are the one that keeps us just upright in our hearts and our minds. Father God, you keep us in the right perspective. If we keep our eyes stayed upon you, Your word, the word says you would keep us in perfect peace. So Father God, we're trying to keep our minds stayed, hallelujah, upon you, Father. I pray that you would speak to us tonight, encourage us to keep fighting this fight of faith. Father God, and to keep on pushing, Lord God, keep holding on to your hand for you have us um, right in the palm of your hand. And for that, we are thankful. I pray for every person that joins us tonight. I pray for those that desire to join, Father, I pray, but maybe it slipped their minds or whatever. I pray that you would um, just speak to them, Lord. And I just pray that you would allow us to just have a beautiful, beautiful, encouraging time tonight. Um, lift our hearts, lift our spirits, deal with every situation. Give us strategies tonight, Lord. We need strategies. Give us strategies. <laughs> Give us plans, Lord. Share with us your plans as we are listening and reading and sharing together tonight. Give us strategy. Give us plans that we may walk forward in that which you desire for us to do. We bless you and we glorify you in the name of Yeshua, our Savior. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to his name. How y'all doing? I hope y'all all right. How y'all doing? Anybody? I'm doing pretty good. Doing good. good. I mean, you've been on my mind, girl. I hope all is well over there. Who you say you're pretty, going pretty smooth. Oh, your friend. Sorry. Good. Well, Reva, you always on my mind. You always <laughs> on my mind. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey miss sherry hope all is well good to see you um hey hey, hey. um so tonight we have been talking hey lad tonight um we've been talking about over the past few weeks just really kind of we've been hovering in this space of standing of fighting of watching the father um, work and fight on our behalf. We've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks and um, in different aspects. Um, and so I shared with you guys last week that I wanted to dive into Psalm 18 and I felt like the Lord put that in my heart and my spirit. So we're going to walk through Psalm 18. We're going to take our time through it and we're going to look in it, you know, um, and really see what the psalmist has to say to us as far as encouraging our hearts helping us to keep going, keep standing. Many of us are in the middle of battles and it is literally a battle of destiny. It is a battle of future. It is a battle of life and death. <laughs> and so we want to continue to stand. I want to encourage you all to keep going. Um, man, adversities may be great and they will increase. That's what I can tell you. They will increase in the days ahead, but our father never changes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He never changes and he never ceased to be with us. Y'all, I'm not telling y'all something. Some of y'all have talked to me at different moments and y'all will know I have my ups and I have my downs. I have my moments where I am done, completely done with all of it. I'm done with it. But man, the father gives me strength. And he said he would. He said he would give us strength that we would be trees planted by rivers of water, like like trees planted by rivers of water that will never run dry. He said he would hold us up with his righteous right hand. He said he would keep us from falling. He would command his angels toward us that we won't even hit our foot against the stone. Y'all, he's given us so many promises that he's with us. He will never forsake us nor leave us. 
and I just want to just keep encouraging you all to keep going, keep doing what you're doing as long as you're doing the will of the father. Hey, I know it's tough. I know it's hard, but we can do it. And so tonight we just want to tap into the Psalmist David. Um, I know many of you have probably read the book of Psalms. You've walked through the book of Psalms, but I just want to give you a little bit of it. Um, and this has just jumped out to me. And there's some parts, y'all, that I'm still kind of mulling over and walking through. But we'll walk through it tonight as much as we can. And then we'll continue on until we finish the Psalm. Because Psalm 18 has a lot of chapters. And that is okay. We're not going to cover all of them all of them tonight. Okay? Um, Psalms um, are really songs. They were, they were poems that were supposed to be set to songs or to music. And they were written by various people. I remember when I was little, I used to believe that Psalms was all written by David because that's how they would preach it or teach it. It's like all the Psalms were written by David. No, all the Psalms were not written by David. Okay. He wrote, he, he wrote about 73 of the Psalms. David was a king. For those of you that do not know, he was a king. And he is from which the line from which our savior comes. All right. So he is a king. Um, the book of Psalms is often considered the first hymnal. Um, hymnal mm. book. You read it, you can see and feel all of the emotion of the writer. A lot of things. I love the Psalms and really God speaks to me through the Psalms. Sometimes I'm praying and he will give me a Psalm to read that will mirror what I was praying for. And I just transition and begin to pray the psalm to the mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. We all know he responds to his word. So I just start praying the psalm to his father, to, to our father. And a lot of times he just, it just mirrors all the emotion and the rawness that we feel in our hearts <laughs> as humans. Mm -hmm. Man, they captured that. And it's so beautiful that the father allowed us to, to have such a book. Okay. <laughs> hey what's up girl you fine um the psalms were collected over a thousand years by various scribes like i just said from 1400 bc to around 450 bc and they are organized somewhat chronologically all right chronologically means in order all right it happened the way it happened all right um all right so tonight we're going to read one of david's psalms and the interesting thing about Psalm 18 is it is directly mimicked in 1 Samuel 22. The exact same words are written. I mean, letter for letter, it is written again. Um, what that indicates to me is the importance of this moment for David, the importance of what was going on in his life, all right, and, and what he was trying to get over to those that would hear in first Samuel, second Samuel, I'm sorry, second Samuel 22, second Samuel comes and he reiterates what David shared. All right. But we're going to read, um, this poem song, Psalm of David. Um, and the title of it is praise for deliverance. Now, I I really am, am, when I read this and I felt led to read it, I felt like it was where I am, no worries, Quinn, it's, it's like where I am and where I'm headed, all right? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the Father doesn't deal with us necessarily where we are in the moment. He's already given us the wisdom for the moment we're in. A lot of times he's preparing us with the Holy Spirit for where we're walking to. Um, and I just felt like this was for me. I felt like it was for me. And I hope many of you will find that this was for you, that it's speaking that directly to you, that David is having a conversation with us while he's having a conversation with the father. Um, let us do our declarations and then we'll jump right in to the scripture. Um, Sorry, ladies. Lord have mercy. Y'all know how I am with this sharing. I need me like two screens or something because I get all <laughs> twisted up. Glory to God. All right, here we go. All right. Um, you can repeat with me. Um, 
as we read our declarations and we posture our hearts to hear the word of God, we don't just want it to fall off of our ears, but we want it to pierce our very souls that we may grow and become stronger in the faith and in our walk. So Lord, I pray that the word today would find good soil in my heart. I reject the thoughts of offense where the light of your word exposes my sin. I do not take offense. I will change and turn to you, my heavenly father. I reject condemnation. Your word says that Jesus did not come to condemn people. This word does not come to condemn me, but it comes to heal me. I reject accusation. Satan is the accuser of brothers and sisters. And this word does not come to accuse me or abuse me. This word exposes Satan and his lies. And I choose to believe and receive the truth. God says in his word, blessed are my eyes for they see and my ears for they hear. For many prophets and righteous men desire to see what I see and did not see it and to hear what I hear and did not hear it. Matthew 13, 16. Therefore, I will hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against or miss the will of God. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things. Father, we need to see wondrous things from your word today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. Get your Bibles. I hope you guys got your Bibles or you have um, what's on the screen. And we're going to, um, we are going to read the word. Hallelujah. I pulled up both Psalm 18 and 2 Samuel 22, but in your own time, go back, look at it, um, spend some time with it. I hope you guys had a chance to read through the word prior to now so that we all can walk and journey through the word together. Amen. Is there anyone that would like to read um, tonight? At all, if not, I will go ahead and read. Is there anybody that's like, I just want to read tonight? I don't want to leave anybody out. Hallelujah. Nobody wants to read. Glory to God. I will read. <laughs> Come on, I can read. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm busy, but I can read. What you want me to read, girl? It's okay, read. Just listen. Okay, okay. It's all right. It's all good. All right. All right. This is for the choir director um, of the servant of the Lord, David, who spoke the words of this song to the Lord on the day the Lord rescued him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Um, some of you, do you guys... Are you up to who Saul is? Do you guys know who Saul is in reference to David? Can anybody give me a quick snapshot? Who is Saul? So we can understand the intensity of David's praise and his um, adoration as he's um, writing this psalm. Can anybody tell us a quick snapshot? Who is Saul in reference to David? and the enemies that David was dealing with? Anybody? Saul is the reigning king. And uh, David at the time was appointed, like God had chosen him king, but he had not yet taken the throne. And so David, Saul wanted to kill David and David was like, on the run, you could say. and, and uh, from from Saul and this the Lord you know from this psalm like the Lord delivered him and saved him why does Saul want to kill David Saul wanted to kill David because Saul wanted to stay king <laughs> and God said no David you are the one that I chose to be king yes and yes and second in Samuel was the prophet who God sent to anoint David as king. 
and and I think that's super significant because for for many of us, man, we've been walking through life and we've been given promises and word has been spoken of who we are and who we're going to be and what God wants to do with our lives. However, it has not manifested yet. David was one that walked through that process. David tended to sheep. But in the midst of him tending to sheep, God sent Samuel to anoint him and declare him to be king. He was the smallest one. He was the one that everybody else pretty much counted out because he did not look the part. However, he was God's chosen man. That in itself should encourage our spirits. Mm -hmm. That in itself should encourage our spirits. David, even in the midst of that, stayed faithful. Listen, tonight I'm looking for God to give us strategies. I believe he's giving us strategies in the midst of that. Because we've been, we've heard what God has said about our lives. We we know where he wants to take us in, in, you know what I mean? As much as we can understand it. Let me say that. And as much as we can understand it God has sent message he sent prophets he sent word he's spoken to you personally he's spoken to you through his word about what he wants to do with your life however the moment that you're in doesn't look anything like what the father said the end game was going to be <laughs> be encouraged David <laughs> is here to teach us tonight how mm -hmm. to stay steadfast. Just it, we're we're just talking about the top part of his fight. He was serving a king, the mm -hmm. king, yet God told him he would be king. Mm -hmm. You can understand probably David's heart about this and how difficult this was for him. And as Stephanie said, Saul became, really became jealous mm -hmm. because the people at, at a point later on, you'll see when you follow up on David's story that the people became like so into David and they were like, David killed his 10,000, but Saul killed mm -hmm. his thousand. And Saul was like, I'm not having it. But it was nothing that David had done except for embraced, begin to walk out what God had declared for his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That encourages me. Hallelujah. So on mm -hmm. the ends of God, we're now fast forwarding to God actually delivering David from the hands of Saul. And this is David's declaration to God and about God all at the same time. He's giving mm. God praise and honor for saving his life and for bringing him out of the hands of the enemy, which was such a dark place for him. And we'll see that. And some of us are in that, those spaces right now. In our own little ways, our own little worlds, it's not a comparison because what's big for you may not be big for me and what's big for me is not big for you. But God has a way of drawing us all into where he wants us to be so that we can become who he said we are, not who we're going to be, so that we can become who he said that we already are. God deals with us according to how he has set our lives to be according to his plans. Hallelujah for that. So someone starts off and David is talking to Yahweh. He says, I love you, Lord. My strength. It's almost like he's having a reflection as he's talking to the father. Hmm. But then it seems like come verse two, as I kept reading through this, I'm like, man, David seems like he shifts who he's talking to. Hmm. He says, the Lord is my rock. It's almost like he starts giving a testimony 
as he's praying and writing this song to the Father. He says, the Lord is my rock. I can stand on him. He is firm. He is sure. I can count on him to be my stability. He is my rock. My fortress. I want you all to see this picture and this imagery that David is laying out for us. I don't know about you, but it's almost like he beckoned me to come close and listen to this beautiful testimony of who mm -hmm. his God was. So that if I did not know him, I would feel close to him through David's words. Mm -hmm. It would stir up an interest in me to begin to journey with God. Because David. It's almost like um, like for us now, everybody runs off of Yelp or the the Google testimonies of a business or um mm -hmm. or 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 a place, a restaurant is my favorite. I'm like, I'm looking at the reviews for the restaurant or Amazon. You want to know what do other people have to say about this particular thing or product or place or person. Right. Well, David didn't give us a moment to ask. He's just started. To, he could not help it. He said, the Lord is my rock. You need a rock. Mm -hmm. He is your rock. He's able to be that for you. He's not just a rock and something you can stand on and be sure, but he's a fortress. A fortress means he covers mm -hmm. you and protects you from outside danger. He's a fortress. Mm. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Mm. He's our fortress. Yeah. And my deliverer. Glory to your name, Father. David is like, he delivers me. Carries me out of wicked and crazy situations. He delivers me. He doesn't just uh, give me a place where I can plant my feet. He covers me up through being my fortress, but then he also protects and delivers me from danger. We often say danger seen and unseen. He delivers me. My God, my mountain where I seek refuge. He lets us know that God is a hiding place. Anybody be rescued? I've needed refuge. He's a hiding place for us. Glory to God. Don't know where to turn. God is a place to turn. He's a safe space. He's our hiding place where you can seek refuge. He continues. He says, my shield. Yes. That means he blocks things from coming my way. He blocks arrows from hitting me and the horn of my salvation. Glory to your name, Lord. Mm. Glory to your name. My stronghold. This is so, so good. When I think about horn of my salvation, I'm thinking about um, he saved me, but there's a there's an inward declaration that comes and sounds out of me because of God's saving grace. Interesting. The horn, that's what I think of, a horn of my salvation. He saved me to the point that everything within me cries out to his glory for what he has done. He is my horn of salvation. He's my stronghold. Not stronghold like something that has me bound, yet he is something that holds me together and it brings freedom to me. Mm. Man, who wouldn't subscribe 
<laughs> Yahweh, after we, reading such a review, we're only in, in the second verse. He continues, he says, I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I was saved from my enemies. Anybody need saving? Anybody need saving? I hope you all are able to write down notes and I really, um, before I started, I meant to say to you to get that thing in your mind mm -hmm. that has been attacking you, coming up against you. We're talking spiritual things that manifest in different ways in our natural elements. Spiritual things. Get that thing in your mind and in your heart. If you're not sure what it is, ask the Lord, what's been coming up against me? What enemy poses me? And I want you to set that up against the testimony of David. And I just believe in my heart of hearts. I know for me, nothing that I'm going through can stand up against the testimony of David when it comes to Yahweh. Nothing. He's bigger. He's better. He's stronger. He's wiser. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you guys hear me still? Mm -hmm. Going in. Is that better? Hello. Got there. Can you hear me, Let? Yeah, we can hear you. It's just breaking up a little. Glory to God. Yeah. I hope that's better. I think I was on, um, anyway, I was on my husband's Wi-Fi. I think he walked out. So, out of the house. So, all right, glory to God. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I was saved from my enemies. He gets to a little bit more description to give us some insight about how severe his fight was. He wanted mm. us to know that this wasn't lightweight work. He wasn't just dealing with a, a car cutting him off at a traffic light. He wasn't dealing with <laughs> um, some things that maybe we in our American culture uh, attribute to the enemy coming up against us. He wanted to describe to us how deep and dark his fight was. And there's some things that we're going through that's deep. It's real, real. Me and Stephanie was talking today. She said, it's real, Miss Siobhan. I said, yeah, it's real. This is not a game. We are literally fighting for our lives every single day. Mm -hmm. Every day. We're fighting. Mm -hmm. Verse four, it says, the ropes of death were wrapped around me. Man, I felt that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like life's issues and problems are literally squeezing the life out of me. Seems like there's no hope. There's no way out. There's no one to, to even help me. You try to ask your friends for prayer, your husbands for prayer, your family for prayer, and nothing seems to work. You're reading the scripture and it seems like you cannot get any relief. David was letting us know the ropes of death were wrapped around me. There was no hope in my situation. I did not think I was going to make it. Saul was going to kill me. The torrents of destruction terrified me. Mm. He was afraid. He had moments where he was afraid. He encourages us though. 
we can't help but to reflect back on verse two, where he's telling us about the mighty saving grace of the father. The ropes of Sheol, for you all that don't know, Sheol is hell. Mm -hmm. The ropes of Sheol entangled me. It's everywhere he turned, it seems like hell was on his trail. Couldn't get out, couldn't dodge it, entangled him, wrapped him up. The snares of death confronted him. But in that moment, darkest moment, probably one of the darkest moments of David's life and one of the most craziest things, he didn't really know what he was going to do. The odds were stacked against him. He literally was afraid that destruction was going to be his next course. And he says, I called to the Lord in my distress. He's giving us strategy. Mm may not seem like strategy, but many of us, when we're in the midst of our situation, we rather talk about it. We rather complain about it. We rather run and cry about it. But David said, I call to the Lord in my distress and I cry to my God for help. I had to look up more about the, I cried to my God for help because I, I didn't want to just, um, it didn't read to me that way, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't just that he was crying tears, mm -hmm. but when you really look into the word, I, you look into the word cry, it literally means to invite one of the word, one of the meanings of the word cried is to is to yell out, is to shout, but it's to invite. I said, oh my God. David says, in the midst of my distress, I invited God to help me. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, this is me. How many of us think this way when we're in trouble? When things are up against us, with how many of us are, are inviting God, God, come into this situation, take a seat. Mm. We already know that he tells us later on in Psalms, I believe, he says that he prepared a table. David invited him and he prepared a table in the presence of his enemies. Mm -hmm. Invite God into your distress. Stop trying to handle it yourself. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to talk your way through it and out of it. Stop staying up all night long. Stop worrying about it and invite God to help you. Glory to his name. Y'all need strategy? This is strategy. Because he's able to help us. He's able to help us. He invited God to help with such passion. Intensity. God. Come, please. Help me. Glory to your name. Mm -hmm. Glory to your name. The scripture says, from his temple, whose temple? From God's temple, he heard my voice. And my cry to him reached his ears. The scripture says, before you can even ask, he answers. You're mm -hmm. not praying amiss. The prayer myth means you pray and you don't expect God to do it. You don't expect him to respond. We're not praying that way no more. We've matured. We've grown in the things of the spirit. We are asking the father to help us because we know he can. Amen. We know that he's capable. We know that he's able. 
David says, from his temple, he heard my voice and my cry to him, reach to thee. Mm -hmm. Verse 7 tells us how intense God is about his children. If you think God doesn't care, oh my God, he cares. Mm -hmm. And even when you don't see his response, by faith, you know he is responding on your behalf to those that oppose you. Mm. Why? Because he said that he would. Mm -hmm. He is not a mm. God that is alive. He is not feeble man. But he needs to repent. Mm -hmm. When he says it, he means it. God is fighting. On behalf of us, we saw this a couple weeks ago when we were reading Exodus 14. It gave us a demonstration and a layout of how God was fighting mm -hmm. for his children. It was a strategy like none other. He gave us many accounts of him standing up and fighting. Mm -hmm. It won't be your way. It has to be his way. You have to surrender and submit to the way and to the will of God. You can no longer walk it up against these situations that you are presented with in your own mind and in your own strength. Mm -hmm. We've been saying this for a long time. You must get God's perspective. God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to handle it? You said, be still and know that you're God. Okay, I'll be still. What does that mean to be still? That means to be ready and positioned for you to move me forward. Mm -hmm. I'm not just standing by. Mm -hmm. I'm not just standing by. I'm waiting on you. Waiting means to entangle God, bring him into the situation and allow him to cover you. you we're not talking about the ropes of she -ho. We're talking about the hand and mighty power of, all, of an almighty God entangling in the midst of your mess and your situation and your danger and distress. Mm. Him rescue. Glory to him. Any questions, comments, thoughts so far? I know it's been a lot. It's been good to me. It's feeding my soul. I don't know about y'all, but it's feeding my soul. Anybody, quickly. I like how you, um, just in the very beginning, how you, you read verse one, I love you, Lord, my strength. And then you're like, it's almost like he shifted and it's like he is almost like he's talking to somebody, you know, like he's giving his testimony. It's almost like he started the Psalm with his conclusion. I love you, Lord, my strength. Like maybe that's, you know, like that's what he concluded. And then he's, you know, he's singing and, and telling his story almost like, I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I never had that perspective until you said, until you said that. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Any comments, thoughts, observations, parallels with your own life? Anything you want to share or interject at this moment? If not, say I can keep going. Keep going. This is me, Carlette. Hey, Carlette. I think it speaks about um, to me so far that like he's going through so much but he's choosing to praise like um like he said he was being strangled and I and I can identify with that like I was like God so much is happening around me in me around me everywhere and I feel like you know I can't catch a breath but to choose to praise God in the midst of it or choose to trust God or choose to, like you said, invite God into your situation and not allow the pressure to suffocate you. Mm. Um, 
it's not always easy to do and you may do it through actual cries and tears you That's know right. but um it um is encouraging because sometimes you feel like the enemy tries to make you feel like oh you're alone in this but from you explaining what the word means it's like okay so david's been here someone else has been here um, it's not just me um because sometimes you feel like it's just you even though you know your sisters and stuff are going through it but when you go back to the word it's covering to know that the men of god and the men of the bible they struggle the same way you did so this is not a place that god has not been able to intervene or overcome or that he can't deal with you because he's been here before with them as well like does that make sense yep Yep. because david is talking to us after the, the the situation god has delivered him he's already walked through this mm -hmm. so he's speaking from a place of knowing he's not in the midst of the situation now he's speaking from i've already gone through this and this is the result of god being in the midst of my situation does that make sense everybody mm -hmm. God was there. The truth is we're not alone. And I want to I want to really really speak to that because that's the second time I heard that today. You are not alone for the Lord that God is with you wherever you shall go. That's what the scripture says. So when the enemy tries to whisper those things, whisk, shout back. No, 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 I'm not alone for the Lord thy God is with me wherever I shall go. He shall never leave me nor forsake me. Glory to God. We command every spirit and every devil to shed his mouth for our God shall destroy him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse seven, it says, then the earth shook and quaked. It's almost like an earthquake began to happen on the earth as God was listening to David cry out to him for help. God became angry. Then the earth shook and quaked. The foundations of the mountains trembled. They shook because he burned with anger. Don't mess with God's children. Don't mess with God's children. God, it's, it's like David was saying, it's like an earthquake happened the moment I begin to call, call out to God. God shook up everything, broke stuff up. He came with such power, authority and command over the earth. The mountains trembled. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine when we lived in California, one night we were asleep. It wasn't even a real earthquake. It was like a small tremor. But that small tremor caused our bed to rock. So I can only imagine when he says the earth shook and quaked the foundations of the mountain. Y'all know how big mountains are? The foundations of the mountains trembled. They shook because he burned with anger. I have to believe God is the same way about us. It's just smoke rose from his nostrils and consuming fire came from his mouth. Coals were set ablaze by it. As I was reading that, that sounds like what we would know to be like a dragon. Mm -hmm. Like smoke coming out of his nose, what we've seen on TV, and fire coming from his mouth. I just was like, whoa. About to have a here. Coals were set ablaze by the fire that came out of God's mouth because he was that enraged by what was happening to his son. Mm. Yes. Um, India said God will do the same thing for us. Yes, he will. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Oh my gosh. Did my scripture leave me? Come on now. 
Stop acting up. Get on on the screen now. We having a good time. Mm -hmm. All right. Nine. He he bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. God hid in the midst of the darkness. That's interesting. There's no bounds. There's no place upon the earth or in heaven or in hell below that God cannot go and have not gone and is not presently there. But David says he made darkness his secret place. It sounds like to me, he was getting ready to sneak up on the enemy and the enemy wasn't going to know what was about to hit him. <laughs> His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Ooh. This sounds to me, y'all know the scripture. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where it says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. This, a, a connection... Mm -hmm happens for me because David is saying I am in trouble and in the midst of night God comes in to rescue me says he made darkness mm -hmm. his secret place his canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies that sounds like nighttime to me mm -hmm. from the brightness before him his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. Have anybody ever been in a hailstorm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How vicious that is, intense it could be. Yeah. Man, the father was shaking up the place because his chosen one was being troubled. I keep repeating that because I want you to see yourself. I no longer want us to walk around with gloom in our hearts or in our minds or on our spirits or in our emotions. I want us to be settled in our spirits to know that God is coming through the darkness to rescue us. That there's no enemy that shall come up against you that God will not deal with. He's going to address it. He's going to handle it. Hallelujah. You can give God glory for it. He's going mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. David is assuring us. 13 says the Lord thundered from heaven. And the most high uttered his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. It seems like when God became angry, all of the elements begin to respond at his <laughs> movement, at his voice. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe. Woo! Lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. See, David, David, he he had a relationship with God in a way, man, that was so amazing. Not saying it from a place like we can have the same relationship with God because we do and we can if we seek him he shows no favoritism God is God of his children and those that seek him shall find him and those that desire him he is willing to open up himself and share himself with you if you want to be a part of what he's doing God is faithful David was a man after God's own heart even with all of his stuff and all of his junk that we know that many people try to rest upon, 
and sometimes even justify their actions from. That wasn't the point. The point was God, David knew how to get to God. No matter what situation or circumstance he was in. He never allowed his situation to draw him away from his help. Didn't matter what he did. He never allowed it to pull him away from his source. And God honored him for that. Right now we're seeing where David is sharing with us about the account of his enemies coming up against him and how God dealt with them. And God dealt with them so severely that they were vanquished. Vanquished means completely disappeared, no longer around, no longer visible, no longer available. And it's funny because I was asking my husband about this. I'm like, you know, in, in modern day Christendom, we pray. And when something happens or somebody offends us or somebody brings harm to us intentionally or somebody brings evil upon us, we tend to pray from a place of, Father, deal with the spirit that's behind the person. It's not the person, it's the spirit. But when I see David, David said, kill them all. Kill my enemies, God. Deal with them severely. He did not sugarcoat it. Because if they're an enemy of my father, then they are enemy of me. And that's just a side note that many of us are trying to befriend people and things that God says, I want no dealings with it. What God loves, I love. What God mm -hmm. hates, I hate. I am not saying that God hates people. I am saying, though, that there are people that hate God. God desires that all should come, but the truth of the matter is all will not come. All will not love him. And it doesn't matter how much God does for them, they will not love him. Just something for us to think about, to pray about. David was intentional about his words. He was intentional when he found himself in these situations, how he prayed to the father and how he engaged the father and invited him into the situation. It says he sent out his arrows and scattered the foe. It's real interesting because it's no longer like it's just a foe of David. This person or, or, or entity became a foe of God. Lightnings in abundance and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were uncovered. To me, this is a reflection back once again to Exodus 14, when the enemy was coming in upon the children of Israel and God allowed the channels of the water to stand up. He rescued his children. And as the enemy was in hot pursuit of God's children and his chosen ones, God scrambled their tires and confused it where they could not get out. And they died and their bodies washed up upon the shore. And they were no longer in existence. This makes me think of that when he says, then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were uncovered. At your rebuke. So after he reflects on all of this and, and he shares all that God has done, and it's almost like he's having this conversation with himself and, and with us. He's sharing this with us. He comes back and he says, at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. Hmm. It's like God took a breath and the channels of the sea were seen and the foundations of the world were uncovered. That's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I feel like my son who turns everything into like a uh, anime or <laughs> I'm like, like a cartoon. I'm like, it's not a cartoon, but it's really interesting how he's laying this out and describing this for us, for us to visually see it. 
Mm -hmm. Not just read the words, but visually see what God had done for him. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. There are some enemies that we're up against and they're simply just too strong. I've been saying that there's some things, God, I can't, I can't, I don't even know where to begin. I cannot address them because they're too strong for me. They have too many, too many finances for me. God, they can do too much. They have, they have too much going on, but I can stand and know that my God is stronger. And if I invite him into my situation and I cry out to him, he comes in the midst of what's going on and he begins to deal with my enemy. Hmm. They confronted me in the day of my calamity. Meaning I was already weak. I was already at a bad place and my enemy came up on me at that point. Oh, I felt it and I've seen it. I've gone through it. He says, but the Lord was my support. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can see David's weak body at this moment and the enemy mm -hmm. opposing him and God coming and undergirding him and strengthening him to the point where he can stand. He also brought me out into a broad place. I was no longer hemmed in, but he gave me space to move around. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Strategy. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Can God find delight in you? And in me? When God sees you, he sees how you're living. He sees what you're doing. Does God smile in delight because you're his daughter and you're obedient and you're submitted to him and you're yielded to his call? Is your heart bent for God? We're not talking about without mistake. We're talking about is your heart bent for God? Or are you still wavering? Back and forth, can't decide whether you want to trust him or not. Can't decide whether you want to be with him or not. Can't decide whether you want to live for him or not. Where are you? I want to be like David. I want my testimony to be, he delivered me because he delighted in me. He brought me out into a broad place. Hmm? 20 says, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Not God's righteousness, not God's faithfulness, but according to your righteousness, the Lord shall reward you. Can you be found righteous? Hallelujah. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. I want to look up that word to make sure I understand what it means. That's what I thought it meant. Make amends to for loss or harm, suffer, compensate. Woo wee, that's good. That's so good. David says, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hand. He compensated me. Everybody like compensation. <laughs> Everybody want, want retribution. But are you righteous? Hallelujah. Are your hands clean before God? If not, repent now. Father, I repent, Lord Jesus, I repent. <laughs> I repent for those things that I've done that are against you and against your ways and your will. 
Take this moment, lift your hands, repent before the Lord, hallelujah, that you may be found with clean hands. For I kept, I have, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. Is that what you mean, David, by being righteous? Mm -hmm. He's given us strategy, y'all. Giving us tips of how to live and to be successful in the kingdom. He says, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. What's up, India? Hallelujah. This this is a this is a rich word. And you know, I, I um I read over this uh Psalms 18 a couple of times, but yeah. just even listening as you as you are teaching us, I'm just I'm just seeing things a little different. Yeah. You know, God is making his word even more clear. And then I was just and then and my thought, I'm just like, if we get to that point with God, when God say to us, daughter, there is nothing I would not do for you. Huh. Because, because you are in right standards with me. You're in the right place. Your heart is in the right posture with me. When God, when we get to that point when God whispered to us, and he said, daughter, there is nothing I would not do for you That's because right. your heart is in the right place. My God, like, whoa. Yeah. And I'm going to tell y'all, I'm a testament that he do, that he'll do it. I was, um, I think I was riding in my car because this was a few weeks ago. These things happen to me and I just kind of like, <laughs> I note them. Sometimes I write them down. I definitely share them with my husband. Um, but I'm trying to get better at like annotating these moments because it's real. And sometimes for me, I'll like go, whoa, did that just happen? Like, did that just happen? But I was... We had just gone through a, a situation, if I got my timeline right, and I'm terrible at timeline, but I think we had just gone through this crazy situation recently. And I don't even remember at this current moment um, where I was or what I was doing, but I do recall the Lord whispering to me, I call you righteous. And it was to the point where I literally kind of stepped back and I was like, what? And I do that often. I'll hear God <laughs> say something and I just step back and go, did I just hear what I think I heard? Because that, okay, did I hear that? And he says, I call you righteous. It was really in response to what I was dealing with because I was much like David, I had a foe that came against me, both in the spirit and in the natural, both in the spirit and in the natural. And I heard the voice of God in consolation to the brokenness in my heart. And he says, daughter, I call you righteous. I'm not saying that to you all as if I am a marker, I'm saying it as a testimony and another, another testament to if we can pull ourselves to live according to the ways and the will of God. He's not talking about, I keep saying that he's not talking about perfection and without fault. That's why Yeshua came and died because we are frail, broken individuals and God desired to make us whole. He's talking about, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. I made a choice to keep God's way. But I first had to make a choice to learn what his ways were. I had to abandon my way and I had to really get to a place to say, not my will, but thy will be done. I had to choose not to, um, I had to choose to, um, it says, and have not wickedly departed from my God. I had to choose to not walk away from God, not to put any other God before him. These are things that we are able to do. 
through the power of our Lord, through the love of our God. We don't have to give in to sin. Is sin before us? Were we born in iniquity? Absolutely. But when Jesus came and he died for us, he washed it away. And if we get to that place where we surrender to God and we cry out to him and say, Father, this is where I am. This is where I've been, but not my will that will be done. God will meet you in that place and he will wash you through his blood and he will fill you with his Holy Spirit and he will help you and keep you. Yes, Lord. He will do it. He will do it. And his word will be written so upon the tablet of your heart and it will be as a garland around your neck. And because you love him, the word says you choose to obey him and you will obey him. And then God doesn't just allow us to walk through this world aimlessly obeying him. Not that he's all into rewards. He's not a Santa Claus, but he's trustworthy. And because he's trustworthy, we see right here in David, where David is testifying to us and he says, According to my righteousness, the Lord rewarded me. According to the cleanness of my hands, he compensated me. For I kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statutes from me. David said, I didn't act like I didn't know what God required of me. I kept it right there before me. That part right there. <laughs> I kept that part it before right there, me. <laughs> yes, I kept it before me. Jesus. Go ahead, India, because I saw you put your hand up again, baby. I don't want you no, to. I, I'm just like, I'm I'm receiving like this word is so rich. Like you like right what you just said right there is that part. Don't mm -hmm. act like we don't know what's right according to God. That's right. Don't act like we don't know what we doing. We out of place. Don't act like you don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And God will pull you back together. If you surrender, you say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Yep. Because we want clean hands. We don't want dirty hands. We want our hands to be clean. Yes. Yeah. And then when you said too about um um David, you said according to my righteousness, not God's righteousness, righteousness, but you said David said my righteousness. God bless me because of my righteousness. And sometimes we allow people to put things on us. Oh, you ain't righteous, or you know what I'm saying, or you gotta be this, or you gotta be that. No, you know. Like we all sin, you know, like you said, sin is before us all day, every day, but we have a decision and we have to decide what we're going to do. We want, you know, yep. God gave us that free will. Yeah. But at the end of the, you know, at the end of the day, we got to make sure that we are right and we go to God so he can cleanse us and wash us. Yep. Oh, that's just an awesome word. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I did not put away his statues from me. The image that's before my mind is almost like I have my word and I take my word and I put it up on the shelf and I never take it down. Mm -hmm. I never read it. I never consult God about it. I give God drive by prayers. I never stop because what I'm doing is more important. And so when I'm faced with different decisions and matters and things are before me, I cannot recall what's the right thing to do because I've put away the statutes of God. When somebody on my job makes me angry, I cuss them out because I've put away the statutes of God. When my kids make me angry, even if it doesn't come out of my mouth, it's in my mind. 
how much they get on my nerves. Because I put away the statues of God. I've forgotten that his statute says to train up a child in the way he should go. That when he's old, he shall not depart from it. I'm training. I forget that he says, watch what come, comes out of my mouth to speak those mm -hmm. things that are noble, that are of good report. We must keep the word of God before us daily, moment by moment. Sometimes you got to pull out the word of God multiple times. Sometimes I have to print the word depending on what I'm going through. And where I'm at, I will print, I will type it, I will copy it or paste it, I will print it, and I will put it up on my walls. And if I've had mm -hmm. to put it on every door in my home, I will do it until that word is absorbed in my spirit and it is upon the tablet of my heart and I will remember it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop at 24. He says, I was also. So not just that my hands were clean and I didn't put away his statutes, but I was also blameless before him. He said, in this situation, you could find no wrong in me. I did nothing wrong. Woo. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. My hands were clean. I didn't depart from God. I honored his judgments and his statutes. And I was blameless. And I kept myself from iniquity. I didn't allow the situation to cause me to respond in the midst of me being opposed, in the midst of me being treated wrong, in the midst of me being mishandled, spoken to in a crazy way. I did not allow myself to fall into sin. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. David said, I kept that word. I kept that word. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness. He reminds us again, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo, this thing was good. We got so much more to go. But that right there gives us, it gave us some tips and some tools that we should be able to go back, walk through, eat on. If there's areas where you need to repent, do so. Don't let it harbor. If you've walked away from God and from his statutes, turn back to him. Don't let the enemy trick you into keeping you away from God. Nothing good can come to you if you're away from God. If you're in the midst of a mess, invite God into the situation. Cry out to him for help. And David encourages us tonight that he will help you. He will help you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name, Father. We just thank you tonight. I don't even have much else to say, but thank you. Thank you for recalibrating our perspectives tonight, bringing us before you. Father, we want to see your hand move on our behalf. We want to be found righteous. We want to be seen blameless. 
We want our hands to be clean. Lord, cleanse our hands, Lord. We don't want to be found in iniquity, Lord God. Help us. Touch each and every one of these ladies, Lord, wherever they are in their walks and in their journeys and in their lives, Lord, let us be found as a group of sisters that are blameless before you, that you are in a hurry to respond to God, that you have no issues with fighting for because we're yours. Glory to your name. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. And we honor you for your word. We honor you for your word. Keep us in every way. And let the word speak to our hearts. And feed us that we may be full. And we may have nutrients in our bones. Lord, we love you and we bless you. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord Thank God. You. Anybody Thank got you, any Jesus. recaps, words you want to share, highlight moments? Come on, talk to us. Glory to God. Anybody? Well, I think um, highlight moments. I love how he, I love how he concluded, how he started. I, lo I love you, Lord, my strength. Um, but I love just how you put in his testimony. I love how he just adored God. Like his heart his every heartbeat was God. Like when I hear it, when you read it, when I read, when I see it, like his heart just beats for God, his praise, his adoration, his love, my rock, my portion, like God is all he has. And I love how it just, it just, just pours right out of his mouth. It's so mm -hmm. beautiful. And, um, I see, you know, how he's called it a man after God's own heart. And I think of um, a little bit over in the Psalms where it says, you know, God is the strength of my heart and my portion um, forever. It, it's like, it's all that he is. And so I think, what am I going to carry with me? What What's going to lift me up is like that part. Like he just goes back to who God is. He's my everything. He's my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, whom I can take refuge. He's, yes. he's absolutely everything. Um, he is God. He is everything. Woo, yeah. He's everything. He's everything. Mm -hmm. Lord to his name. Reva, tell us what you mm -hmm. get tonight, baby. Did you hear? I know you said you were busy. <laughs> Anybody, Diana. Siobhan, I also got um God was just here to minister to me um mm -hmm. as you were tonight that Jesus saves and that song Jesus saves. Mm -hmm. Also the song if God is for us, then who can be against us? Yes. Jesus, Jesus saved David. Yes. And he also, he got his enemies. He yeah. said, they ain't going to touch you. You know, mm -hmm. so those two songs ministered to me. Like, it was those songs that came in my spirit as you was teaching us tonight. Awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's so good. So yeah. good. I, I wanted, um, one thing, um, and the same thing with Stephanie was saying, uh, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Um, that that was one thing that really stuck out to me. I know my mom used to say this phrase and it's the Lord is my shepherd. Um, she said, Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. I know you mentioned, you said it earlier. Psalm 23. But, yes. 
Yeah. And that that also stuck out to me as well because she she said it since I was a young girl. Didn't know, <laughs> yeah. What um, you know, what verse that was, but yeah, that that also. Psalm twenty three. You me. should write it down and go read it. Okay. Let that be your devotional this week. Yeah. It'll be good. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing that. Glory I also see like um, I. I don't know the power of God too, like from the blast of the breath from his nostrils, like he breathes, you know, like he speaks and light comes out of his mouth, like from his nose, like, I don't know what a powerful God that he doesn't even lift his hands. Right. And, <laughs> and you know, like, what would you do Lord? If you did, you know, like, I can't even wrap my brain around it, but just to think of it that way, God, like what, if you speak and light comes out of your mouth, like at your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils, like his enemies and the seas go, like, I can't, well, what can't he do? You know? <laughs> That's funny, That's Stephanie, funny. because I, when I was studying the scripture, I had to go back over that part because I'm like, wow, God, this is you, this is you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is God. He's angry because of David's enemies. Yeah. Like man, yeah, wow. I had crazy. to read that. I had to read that multiple times too. Yeah, we serve an awesome, yeah, awesome. and like you can see it. Oh, <laughs> and it and it gets me to even thinking sometimes, like when it thunders or when it rains or when it pours, different things like that. I, I believe God also be speaking when that happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, I was even thinking about that as I was reading Psalms eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Cause I'm like, cause when, cause when it thunders, and I had wrote this in, in my in one of my um, books or whatever, this book I have written a part of, and I say when God, when God, when it thunders, that God speaks. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's and I believe he speaks through uh, the storms and the rain. Like if we listen through the wind, mm -hmm. you know, he speaks through those things. Yeah, through his creation. Yep. Yes. And God is awesome. He's powerful. He's mm -hmm. powerful. Lord, I thank you. Well, hallelujah to your name. This song is key, is in my spirit. So I will sing this over you all. Before we leave um, tonight, I, I speak blessings and peace upon you. May the grace of the Holy Spirit be with you. May you know that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, that the God of the universe loves you so much that he will literally blow smoke out of his nose and fire out his mouth to destroy your enemies um it's it is it reminds me that that saying that say he ain't even, he ain't even have to lift a finger he lift a finger he just he just really just man he's awesome um and so we thank him mm -hmm. um but this old song y'all might know some of it but the chorus of it says oh tell me who can stand be for us when we Call on that great name. His name is Jesus, Jesus precious. Jesus, we have the victory. I want you to know that, that you have the victory in Christ Jesus. I don't care what we're facing. Hallelujah. Some of y'all, we just need to say that. It does not matter what I'm facing. I have the victory in Jesus. I have it. Mm -hmm. Not you're going to get it. You have it. May you walk with the perspective of God. May you see yourself in your life as he sees you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Being victorious is not just something magnificent happening in our lives. It really is a state of being. That I can walk around and no matter what's going on, that my declaration and my testimony can be the same. When the enemy thinks he's got me hinged in, 
I can stand flat footed upon that rock and I can hide as he is my fortress and I will know and be able to declare before my enemy. Tell me who can stand before us when I, I call on his great name. His name is Jesus. Jesus, oh precious mm. Jesus, I have the victory. Glory to God. Y'all have a blessed night. I love you all. Yes. Hugs and kisses to you. Hey, Layla, I'm so glad to see you. Jessica, what's up, girl? Love you too. So glad that you have okay. gone. I love you. Love you, Thank you. Patrice, it's good to Bless. see you again. Glad that you jumped on. Love you, ladies. Talk to you soon. Love you, ladies. Bye. Thank you Thank so you much. Siobhan. It was a great word. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank you, Siobhan. Love you guys. Love y'all.